So we've been receiving requests to look at other controversial topics in this in our field yep. or, or, or in this platform, all right? One of the most controversial topics that we're discussing or that, that's being brought to our attention is cheating and infidelity. Right. <laughs> Another controversial topic, or should we say a controversial person, uh-huh. is Kevin Samuels. My Lord. So here's the thing. <laughs> what happens when you combine the two? Get up, high value men cheat. They cheat, they cheat, they cheat. Why? Well, when you're in the top 10% of all mankind, from a value standpoint, and again, understand, from a money, from a length of money standpoint, from being acknowledged by other men that you are of value, by having a network of high value men and other people, by being visible and having a network of high value men and being useful to others in the group, ladies, understand, what about you? makes you think that a man that's that valuable that 90% of the females on the planet would love to sniff his beard. We didn't think he's going to get out and fight Cerberus and do all these things to come home and just be loyal to you. Oh, let's talk about it. You don't really want to go and talk about it. You don't really got to know to talk about it. Keep your mouth shut. You don't work about it. Ha. Let's talk about it. You don't really got the nerve to talk about it. I don't want to really hear the talk about it. We don't want to talk, look, be gone. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It's time to yeah. talk about it, baby. Let's go. It's time to talk about it. All right. I'm going to be a good wife and sit next to you and be good on my best behavior. So here's so maybe the thing. you can let me sniff your beard after this. <laughs> um, We're going to talk about this here. We're going to talk about it, baby. I'm going to let you talk about it. Okay. I'm going to let you talk about it because you're valuable to this conversation. Here's the thing. We can't keep having all women conversations and all male conversations. We right. can't keep having conversations that beat up and and and, t- and 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 criticize one and beat up and criticize the other because what we're doing is we're putting ourselves into two separate corners and everybody's by themselves. Absolutely. Um, unless it's somebody they can afford, which we're going to get into that. <laughs> so here's the thing. We're talking about high value men cheat. The five toxic reasons that that's a problem. The five toxic, yes, five toxic reasons or five toxic problems of high value men cheat. Right? Yes. Kevin Samuels is a professional stylist and a professional image consultant. All right. And I'm going to be honest. I dig his old stuff. I dig the old stuff, you know, where it teaches you the four, um, the four things that a man, the four things a man need to have in his wardrobe, how to make your cologne last a long time. And none of that. But the problem is that none of that stuff popped off until he transitioned over into the relationship area. And, it's 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 been explosive ever since. But let's be honest, baby. I know part of you digs Kevin Samuels today too. I dig Kevin Samuels. Like, I, I I dig the way he approaches a situation as a man. Right. I don't agree with his information all the time. Right. Okay. And that's what we're talking about here because while we are in this space it's way too easy to attack to attack a person right it's way too easy to get attacked it's going to be way too easy for someone in the comment section to attack us um but that's our land but the the idea is is that we want to engage in the information brought to us correct we want in in engaging in engaging in this information it may pour over into the man the charger to our head and not our heart we're going to actually have to handle this and we want to handle this in a professional and classy way a classy way as possible yeah and i think it's important for us because we consider ourselves equal opportunity helpers right right, right. and so when we get questions from men and or women on various toxic topics and things that it, you know are beginning to really like spill out into our cultures and into our people into marriages and into homes we feel the obligation to address it not from a standpoint again of arguing with the person but understanding how this can now later begin to impact otherwise healthy relationships Absolutely. until you started to buy into some of these reasonings right now if that if if that clip triggered you hang on we got a lot of more There's okay more. the five toxic problems with 
high value men cheat. Now, the first toxic problem of high value men cheat, the first toxic problem of that statement is that it reduces humans to uh, a human value to net worth and net work. Now, let me make sure I give, I want to give you this. If you've never heard of me before, if you've never heard this stuff before, let me run it past you so that you understand. First yeah. of all, high value man, it has been out there for a long time. Is is out there. You Google it, you're going to get over 10,000 hits or more, right? But what he did was he took high value man and he took it to his experience his professional experience, his interactions or whatever, whatever's going on in his world. And so then he began to um, build what he thought was a high value man. So whatever you see out there, this is what he thinks. And if you want to know more, just Google it with his name in it. But here it goes. So what is the definition of a high value man? According to uh, Kevin Samuels, number one, they make $10,000 a month or more based upon local Atlanta, Georgia economy, because that's where he is. So that's mm -hmm. how he developed it. Right. All that means is that you're a provider who makes $10,000 or more, which would typically give you the opportunity to provide for the entire household. The young lady does the, the wife doesn't have to pay a thing. Okay. All right. Number two, and in many households, not all. Number two, this happens for two for three to five years. This, you have this income for three to five years. What that indicates is just consistency. This is something that he's been doing. Number three is that there's group acceptance, that you're not the only high value man you know, which means that you have this mastermind of 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 other people of the winners, influence. right, of, of, of like-minded individuals. Yes. All right. Then the influence comes in number four when you have mm -hmm. a network of high-value men that you can tap. So it's not only you don't only lean on your money, but you're able to um, you, you have connections with people who can influence change in, in lives mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Number five is visibility. This was very important. I thought this was kind of nice. The idea that uh, in order to occupy the space, you have to be visible, which puts you in a professional ech echelon and not just as a hustle uh, or street level echelon, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then number five or number six, I'm sorry, there has to be a utility. You have to be good for something. Uh, just because you have money and a network doesn't mean nothing. There has to be some philanthropy going on. Going on. You have to be giving back something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of these, every last one of these are good goals. I like nothing them. wrong with that. Nothing right. Nothing wrong with that. As a provider, you want to do that. As a professional, you might want to do that. As as a goal, if you haven't picked up what you wanted to do with your entire life, that could be a part of how you structure your professional goals. OK, mm -hmm. but here's the problem. When you take that those financial social economic goals and translate them into intimate relationships and then you say that I can be this way in an intimate relationship because I've met these goals now you're dealing with behavioral issues you're dealing with mental complexes you're dealing with um, uh, saying that I can do this because I'm worth this. Right. So now you're not dealing with the value. You're not dealing with the value of character. You're not dealing, dealing with the value of integrity. You're dealing with just bare bones. Uh, what's at the end of the ledger. Right. Okay. And I guarantee you that sounds good to many men. Right. You know, because a I lot ain't of gotta answer to nobody. I ain't got to answer to nobody. I want to go back to how it was back in the good old days, which we'll get to that conversation in a minute. Right. But I, I'm the provider. I come home. I'm Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R Mr. -E -R, Mr. <laughs> and I come home and that's what I do. Right. OK. <laughs> this set of values is superficial because it doesn't dig any deeper. Here's how I know, because there's a lot of people who are not included in this set of values. Mm -hmm. Teachers. Right. Community servants. Okay. Like mayors or so on and so forth. Mentors. Right. You got the Jack and Jill. You got Boys and Girls Club. You got people who actually enjoy reaching out into the community that may not make that kind of, they may not be money motivated. Right. Like that. Artists, if you will. And uh, another category, which I was, I'm particularly fond of as a veteran is warriors, those people who go out and fight for our freedom to even make this kind of money. Right. When I look at, um, if you look at, since he likes statistics, when you look at what an E9 who has been in the service for 10 years, E9 is up there, who has been in the service, whatever branch for 10 years, depending on where he's stationed, all right, will make half of that. 
you can't tell me that these warriors are not highly valuable mm -hmm. to all that we are. I don't. I'm, I'm, we, we don't have to get political about how they're being used right. or whatever the case may be. All we know is that they are valuable to who we are and what we are. And you can't take that away from them. A couple of things. I think it's very good if seeing something like this and looking at that criteria and says, you know what? I want to step up my game. Heck yeah. Based on that criteria, like let me just do what I got to do, and I want to step up my like step up my game and do that. I think if that's something that motivates you and inspires you, go for it. Absolutely, yes. I think where it's becoming a problem and where we see this beginning to become a problem is number one, either you have. Um, men who start to feel a type of way in their relationships because now they're like, well, shoot, let me go ahead and do what I need to do. Or the other side of that, I, you know, you could easily find because men aren't the only culprits. You have women. It sets the stage for women to be able to say, because you are not this, I don't have to respect you in the home. Yes. Because you don't do this, I don't have to honor you in the home. And so when you make very polarizing statements about marriage and the sanctity of marriage and relationships, you you run the risk of now again ruining um, a culture because of rhetoric. Absolutely. And let me be honest. First of all, let's make this clear. Let's make this absolutely clear. A man should provide. Yes. And protect. Yes. But when he provides and protect, he also prote pr protects from himself. Mm -hmm. There, there's a, there's a greater mentality. Yes. That a man who calls himself a husband. Um, there, there's a greater mission to that, okay? And I don't see this mission inside this anywhere as far as this the the, ideology. The ideology is concerned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Are you ready to go on to the next one? I am. Okay. The second toxic, toxic problem with high-value men cheat is the entitlement, the level of entitlement. Take a listen. Let's go ahead and dispense with this. Miss me with God. I was raised in the Bible Belt and I was baptized at five. I'm going to have an entire broadcast on the disingenuous nature in which how so much of Christianity is marketed today. But just go back to Solomon. How many wives did he have? What did David do with Bathsheba? Understand something, ladies. Men with power, men of value, cheat because they should okay i'm gonna deal with the last piece of that because that's really on this point but because we started out with dispense or miss me with god uh -huh. <laughs> i think it's very important to understand okay the narratives in which those the the, the narratives the framing of those because there's too many people who speaking on God who don't know God or who don't know the information. And so I think it's best to leave that alone. And I think it's best not to have that conversation without someone there um, with you to have that conversation. Because believe it or not, um, whenever we look at any man who's had multiple wives in the Bible, in, the, in those narratives, what we'll find is confusion and deterioration from the family to all the way up into entire nation. That was King Solomon's issue is that he let too much come into uh, Israel and it was led astray. That was uh, King David's issue. There was a huge debt to be paid, which he lost his first son or first child because of that. But there's also another issue right there that, that that's nestled right in there. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what that is. What's that issue? The issue is when you mention Bathsheba, what you forget is that she was already married to a man who was who thought what he did was more important and who he knew was more important. And she got scooped by a king who determined to marry her and treat her right after they lost that child. So there's a lot to deal with right there. So let's go ahead. We'll miss you with that or we'll miss Kevin Samuels with that and that's okay. It's in, if if that's not where you want to if that's not your belief structure, that's fine, but it's important to speak to what we understand. Yes, sir. And and and, I was and sexy stay there. Right there. That was sexy. You go ahead. And you better <laughs> preach. <laughs> oh, hush, hush, Sorry. hush, hush. But at the end, he said, "We can cheat. They can cheat because we should." But in this paradigm, I have to have you have you understand 
that when a man feels entitled by what he makes and who he knows, that entitlement leads him to dishonoring yes. a promise that he made. Why even make her a wife? Now, there was some information. I watched this whole thing. And so he stated, you know, when he was asked why she, she, they have a wife, it's a professional step up. It's, it's what they need in order to professionally, they, it, you look better professionally with the wife. So, but there's still no moral agreement. There is, right. it, and it shouldn't even be moral. There is still no expectation. There is, there's, there is no real commitment there. Right. And what you have is, is an attitude and a philosophy that's malignant and abusive. Mm-hmm. Okay. The only women who participate in that are those who buy into that. Those are women who sign up to be mistresses or sign up to be mail order brides. Those are your Melania Trumps, if you will. This and 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 far be it for me to say that doesn't exist. It does exist. Far be it for me to say that world doesn't exist. I'm sure um, Kevin Samuels can present so many anecdotal persons to partic- that participates in this life. But what we can do is we can say, based upon our experience of counseling couples and walking couples through um, different uh, toxic and terrible behaviors, both sides, that more likely than not. Mm-hmm. Women don't want to be treated like this. They do not. Women don't want to be set aside. Women don't want to be another piece of property that you're entitled to. The third toxic issue of of high value men cheat is that it is intimately exploitive. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Older than you, if you're 25, he's going to be 35 plus. Looking at a man who's five years older than you, is he is going to be much older than you, 10 to 15, sometimes 20 years older than you, and you are going to have to compete for him. You're going to have to compete for him. You're going to have to stay hot, beautiful, feminine, fit, friendly, cooperative, submissive, all those things. You're going to have to invest, sacrifice, and do all these things just to hope to land his last name and you're going to have to accept the fact that even after you get it you're going to still have to put up with other women and him if that's too much leave i don't here's the problem i don't know why you ladies believe as though if you want a high value man ladies you're going to have to praise him publicly Respect and accept public respect, accept, invest, sacrifice, and aesthetically support. You're going to have to in that A, you're gonna to have to accept that you ain't gonna be the only one. Have to. Okay. So what we're looking at, goodness. So what we're looking at is based upon the foundation of our network and net worth, that me being a high value man, um, can expect can can uh, get all that I want from my wife or my woman uh, I get her loyalty I get her aesthetics I get her body I get her mind I get her spirit I get all of her pouring into me and fitting all these categories but I don't have to give any of that back I don't have to do anything for her in other words it allows me to exploit her for my benefit and my benefit alone just because I pay for her, just because she lives some with me and I pay for everything. That is a toxic mentality. It's abusive. It is abusive. And I, it, it, the hardest thing, the hardest thing about hearing that is that I've been in that situation before. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Six figures, no. Like, none of that wasn't even existent. But being in a situation where someone felt like you owed them praise, 
publicly. Somebody who felt like you had to submit and sacrifice and give to them. All things that I 100% believe in as a wife. Oh, absolutely. Like, this is not anything that is um, beyond me to do for I mean, my man. I mean, you do treat me good. I mean, so, so it's not yeah, that issue, but... Right, it's not... That what that was never an issue. The idea was the expectation of that, the entitlement uh, of that, you feeling entitled to that, and never reciprocating in return. And in turn, that plays a psychological terror attack on a woman when she has to find ways, new ways, keep her body right, exercise, praise you publicly, do everything that you need her to do, cook good for you, throw it down in the bed, like all of this stuff. It's crazy and it creates a horror in our minds that we have to do this and work to get all of that from you and never get anything in return. It's humiliating. Absolutely. Not only that, though, the, the difference between what you did then and what you do for me now is that I don't exploit you. I appreciate you. That is the thing. Now, understand. And you reciprocate. I, I reciprocate. But understand what I just said. I don't exploit you. I appreciate you. Mm. When I appreciate, that means I up your value to me by demonstrating how I love you. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's appreciation. That's exactly what it is. That means that you're not being used for my benefit. Right. I love the benefit I get from you. But I give you more of a benefit from me mentally, spiritually. Listen, listen. Well, I'll, I'll say that next. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Absolutely. And so it's very important that we understand that. And, and I can guarantee you nine times out of ten, a, 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 a whole plethora of fans I could guarantee you are not that kind of way. They're just angry because of all the criticism that has come from the um, the other yeah. platforms. Right. But I can guarantee you they're not that kind of way. Right. Okay. So it's exploitation. It's exploitive in that in that instance. The number four, the fourth toxic issue with why high value men cheat is that it lacks empathy. Listen, mm -hmm. let's take a look here. We show you we love you because we come home to you. We share our time, resources, money, everything else with you. And if you don't understand this, ladies, I don't know what you want to hear. So the qualify, here's what's being said. Again, I am the high value man. I make this, my network is this, and I do this. The only way you can look to understand that I love you is that I pay for you. How is that any different than a prostitute? It's just a piece of paper between you. It's just a piece of paper or it's just a long term situation. Right. You might have my children or something of that nature. Right. The problem with this is, is that there is a toxic emotional disconnect. There is a reason why the five love languages and books of that nature are best sellings, right. best sellers. There's right. a reason why so many people like I, I, I get um, uh, uh, Kevin Samuels usually says, and he says it quite frequently that 90 percent of women want these top money earners or whatever the case may be. I think that's 90 percent in that world or if that. And I think that's anecdotal because there's no way that all of us counselors and then the therapists and the MFTs and the LPCs and all of these books are coming out to treat a small a minority of people. Right. This is the majority here. And the majority of people want to be understood. We want to be known and we want to feel felt. And if I say the only way you know that I feel you is with my joint <laughs> and my money, then I think there's a disconnect. There's a human. You are really starving the humanity out of a woman when you do that. Good. It's 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 in, it's entirely wrong. You look at child rearing. Look at um, developmental psychology. Look at everything that Long leads up marriages. to all of it. Look at marriage. Everything that deals with intimate relationships. If you continue to treat a woman like that, you're looking at someone who was withering, mm -hmm. or someone who was hired. Period. Point blank. Really quickly, because there are a lot of women who 
play in this world and try to play this game and like to say that I can deal with it. Yeah. I can do it. it. And you you really don't realize that once you jump into that situation, it does not last for long because somebody always ends up getting hurt. Absolutely. Somebody always ends up understanding why that had to be an agreement up front if there was an agreement. But understanding why that had to be an agreement because somewhere somebody knows that this never works. At the end of the day, you do need more than their money and their tools absolutely <laughs> so let me here's what i want to do let me kick some science to you just a little bit just yes. just some just some real strong hard facts um there was a psychologist uh, and, and a clinician who did some studies in relationships right mm. and intimate relationships marital relationships and they were able to um they were able to accurately predict about 80 to 90 percent of the time um, that a divorce was going to happen, okay? And here's the criteria that they used. Uh, whether where the criticism was there, mm -hmm. you're not enough, you're not good enough, you got to keep working on me. You got to keep, you know, making sure I choose you. Contempt is there, that's speaking down to them. I'm superior to you, I'm hiring you, I make the money, I make the rules. Defensiveness, no accountability, no emotional accountability, no into no internal accountability. And then coldness or disconnectedness or what's called stonewalling. You have to understand that all four of those are forms of lack of empathy. There are forms of disconnectedness. There are forms of turning away. Do you understand what I'm turning yes. away from your emotional needs, turning away? And I know, brothers, listen, I know we don't like to hear the word emotion a lot. But guess what? We're just as emotional. Some of y'all are going to get emotional on this because some of you are triggered. But the, but the, at the end of the at the end of the day, we're just as emotional. We're just not as open and articulate because we still have jobs to do. We still have protection to do. And we protect ourselves a little bit more intimately. Mm -hmm. OK, um, but you have to understand that. If we act in this way, if we behave in this way, we cannot have a real intimate relationship. Right. We can have a wife who's there in theory, but not mentally or emotionally. And they're there and internally dying. That's the thing scientifically as well yes. is that when you are in a relationship and it lacks empathy, it lacks connectedness, it lacks uh, touch and emotion and, and all of that. Honestly, there it's literally scientifically proven that people, your body responds biologically to that. It either will, uh, having all of that prolongs your life expectancy, or if you're in that and in that relationship and you don't have any of that connectedness, it literally can shorten the years of your life. So even if a wife is there in that, she is internally, mentally, and emotionally, and physically dying. And I can tell you, that I don't care how much money you make, most men don't live in that paradigm. Uh, we were going in a back and forth with a young man who uh, dealing with, I think he was dealing on the stock exchange or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And he made, the, he made, he, he made beyond what was going on in the criteria, but he said, I did not let that um, define me. Right. And so because he doesn't let him de define him, he treats people a little bit differently. And that's what we can appreciate. One of the things is, is that you have what we're what what we're getting to the point is, is that you are still valuable even without meeting these criteria tangibly and especially not meeting the intangible criteria. Many right. of you men don't meet this intangible criteria. Many of you are more expressive. Many of you are more empathetic. You try and look to understand whom you're with, especially wives. I, I tend to believe, I don't know his, I don't know his demographic. I, I would love to know it, but I tend to believe that most of his demographic is single men anyway, because they don't have anybody. And so this really actually just pours into the, that uh, kind of a mindset right um and a toxic mindset that i guarantee you once you start picking up on people once you start getting either you're going to use them sorry either you're going to use them or you're not going to be uh or you're, you're going to have a lot of broken relationships right the end result is going to be a lot of loneliness and all the people you breaking up is going to start coming to us <laughs> <laughs> oh god no okay now the fifth toxic reason why high value men cheat is problematic or is a problem is that the expression in and of itself is verbally destructive. Let me, let me, let, let's go ahead and take a look at this clip real quick. There are men 
who choose to abstain from relations with other women. But understand, it is a choice. But it is crazy for modern women to think those men should have to do it. If you have to have a man that's loyal to you, get an average man or actually get a below average man. But if you want the tippy tippy top, the best of the best, be prepared to share. My question is this, why did women of the past openly accept this? Why do women of the past openly accept this? Because they understood that I would rather live in a stone fortress with plenty of meat and vegetables and protection than live on the plains with that other guy. And you're a foolish woman, in my opinion, if you have a man on this level and you leave because he's sleeping with having sex with other women. Can I so start what? this one off? All right. It just, it kind of sounds like he's not living in like 2021. I feel like there's like maybe this was made like 80 years ago. Um, the, the I think two things. Number one, why did women deal with it? Mm -hmm. um, is because they didn't have a choice. It started back in old, you know, high society where, you know, people would actually bring men to their daughters to court and they had to make a certain amount of money because they needed to know that that man could provide for them and possibly the entire extended family if that happened. We understand that some of that has absolutely been carried into this day. But back then, um, going into things, women dealt with it because they had no rights. They had no choice. They had no value, um, you know, attached to them other than sometimes a dowry that was basically had to be given to the the families but when you look at today in the society he says a modern woman is did he did he say stupid i don't want to misquote him uh, i think he said silly i can't remember silly if she left because stupid. um a man cheated uh -huh. right i think the majority of women who make their own ten thousand a month who or who have been with men who make that kind of money have left those relationships and don't desire that kind of man anymore if that was once a thing because they were being devalued and they were being distract d destructive like they were being like cast down in those relationships and so when you put this all in a situation like all women or if you know this is what you want you have to deal with this there are plenty of women out there who have dealt with that behavior and walked away because it's not psychologically or emotionally conducive to that them as a person and their mental health absolutely and i will reiterate yes kevin samuels um, has anecdotal evidence of women living, women making high high figures living in this lifestyle, men making high figures living in this lifestyle. Yeah. But we challenge that with what the majority of the evidence is. And now, and and then with that evidence, with the value of those men uh, who live in that majority, and the value, uh, um, um, the majority of women, or the the value of women living in that majority. Excuse me. They are valuable. When we get into this fifth toxic place, we under, we, we're looking at how they're being talked down to. Average man, below average man, right. silly or stupid women, whatever the case may be. Because they challenge his paradigm or because they don't want what he's looking at, now they become less than. And th if I'm to be honest, that is a toxic behavior that he actually has with his, many of his audience members. Now albeit many of his audience members are women who want to participate in this I, and, and, and that's on them for the life of me we can't figure out why but, but right but at the end of the day when he's challenged or he he loses his patience with their understanding there's a place in him that clicks that allows him to verbally destroy them now with that being the case though um what it's doing as, as toxic as that is, what it's doing is it's letting men know that they can act in that same way. And really, there are a lot of men who don't have the money, who are not mature enough, who are not who, who, who don't even have the character, who are actually out here talking to women like this because they're looking at this young man or this gentleman as, as a mentor. And they haven't even began to meet the criteria yet. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And so 
you have to understand that treating someone or talking down to someone is wrong. And, and I'm going to be honest. In our community, in our community, we are raised on this kind of rhetoric. We're raised up on beating up on our children and talking down to stupid, dumb. Mm-hmm. What do you mean you can't do that? And we're ra- and that bring and we're brought up trying to avoid that, and we're hurt by that, and then we um, then we start talking to people we love like that. Mm-hmm. That is toxic behavior, bar none. It's destructive, like you said. It's destructive. So we have those five points. Now here's what I want to here's what I want to do with those five points. I want to pull them together because I'm about to show you something. Yeah. I'm about to show you the real toxicity of all these pulled together. Uh, I remember watching Kevin Samuels and, and he was responding to someone saying that he was narcissistic or 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 whatever the case may be. And he waved it off. He dismissed it. He said, ah, it's, it's three criteria for narcissism or whatever the case may be. Um, that is incorrect. Uh, there are nine symptoms or behaviors that uh, a therapist looks at in order to identify whether someone can be diagnosed with narcissism. Mm -hmm. It takes only meeting five of them in order to be diagnosed with narcissism. Right. It takes three of specific ones to be, to, to, to be diagnosed with, um, uh, to be diagnosed as dangerous. Right. Um, which is called the dark triad. Okay. What we did, we're not diagnosing, but what we did, we were able to look at all these things. Think about this. The definition of a high value man is superficial based upon what I make and, and uh, who I know mm-hmm. that's it's superficially made. I'm entitled to cheat or I'm entitled to do this and that, that and the other because I'm a high value man. I exploit. I'm able to exploit women because or the woman who decides she wants to be with me. She needs to understand she needs to be exploited and competitive. Um, number four, uh, lacking of empathy. I don't care. This is who I am. This is what I do. And number five, verbally destructive. All five of those, all five, are symptoms of narcissism. Right. All five fit into those categories. All five. We didn't mention anything about the arrogance and conceit. That's another symptom. We didn't mention about the the, the idea that a narcissist insists on the best of everything, not because, and that's not wrong because it's the best, but it's because that is what gives them value if I have the best of everything. Right. We didn't even mention the preoccupation of one's own brilliance. And we didn't uh, even mention the belief, the belief of my own superiority. For whatever reason. Which are all present in this rhetoric. Which can be, yeah, which are absolutely all present in this rhetoric. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm very surprised by how many, if I'm to be honest, we have a, we have a vast audience. So I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to uh, talk around someone. Okay. But I need to speak to this. I'm very surprised about how many black men pull into this kind of rhetoric and you just got out of a political cycle where you just rejected someone who lives like this. Some of them did. Some of them did. (laughs) Absolutely. But you got to understand the reason why, and just to be honest, the reason why Trump and Trumpism was so popular Mm -hmm. was he, because he spoke to people who weren't being heard. That's real. As toxic and as narcissistic as he was, he spoke to people. He made people feel heard that thought they weren't being heard. That thought they were losing something. That thought they were losing something to so many other uh, uh, cultural variances in American. Absolutely. In America's culture. Yeah. Uh-huh. I was just going to say really quickly. I know we got to go. Like mm-hmm. Kevin Samuels is speaking to a group of men, especially who have been disfranchised and devalued by a lot of women and other men yes. in this space on social media. And so it's easy to latch on to because it's like, finally, at least they're trying to give us some value. At least they're trying to big us up. Right. And the same thing happened politically. You had people who were looking so like with the men, you have women who are starting to earn more, starting to gain more and starting to make men feel like they should be replaced by women. And And then on the other side of it, politically, you had race being a big driver of people feeling like they were being disenfranchised and their control, their power was being taken away. And anytime you get that, it sets a stage for somebody to come in and feed the inner narcissist in our society. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the feed is is, is like this. I'm missing someone filling me. Yes. So I self-medicate on some poison. Because at least it makes me feel better about me. 
Period. And again, I like him. He's entertaining and he's informative. And I appreciate those things that I'm informed by. But there are there is some critical thinking involved when sitting in front of that. And there's only so much you can take. For men, I just tell you this. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this and I want to leave it here. Um, if you're going to be a leader in any way, a mentor in any way, if you're going to call yourself a king, then you're going to have to have king energy. And what do I mean by that? King energy is generative. What is generative? It is creating. It's create. Uh, it's creative. It means that you can't only provide and you can't only produce, but you must also create. And everything that you create will reflect who you are. So if your reflection is 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 emotionally detached, if your uh, reflection is a void or shell and just physically exploitive, then that reflection of you is a tyrant. But if your reflection is loved, respected, and respectful, um, if your reflection is, is, is receiving, if your reflection is healthy, emotionally, mentally, and physically, then that is your reflection, and it reflects you as a king. Go be kings, man. It's good. Peace. Let's talk about it. You don't really got the nerve to talk about it. I don't want to really hear the talk about it. We don't want to talk, little. Be gone.